I have a hot take for you. Atraxa Grand Unifier is worse than Velomachus Lorehold, the Elder Dragon in Pioneer Neoform, and today I'm going to prove it to you. Before we begin, I need to be completely honest with you. Last night, I tried to record the Atroxa Neoform deck in Pioneer. I went 1-4, and, and the one win felt kind of lucky. So today, we're going back. We're traveling back in time before Phyrexia All Will Be One, and we're playing the build that I used to play back then, almost a full year ago, with Velomachus Lorehold, the Elder Dragon, a 7-mana legendary Elder Dragon creature that's a 5-5, five five, and then has Flying Vigilance and Haste. When it attacks, you reveal the top 7 cards of your deck. You can cast an instant or sorcery spell for free. So why is this good? Well, in this deck, the primary game plan is to play a turn 1 Otherworldly Gaze, followed by a turn two contingency plan or a Tygum scheming. And then on the third turn, we play Hooting Mandrills or Tassiger the Golden Fang alongside Neoform. So this allows us to get a seven mana value creature, bringing us back to the Volumachus Lorehold. Well, Neoform says that that creature gets a plus one, plus one counter. So that means that Volumachus can cast spells that cost six now. That means that we can cast Part the Water Veil or Karn's Temporal Sundering to take extra turns. The plus one plus one counter on the Neoform is super relevant because this allows us to play these spells. So you attack for six, you attack for six, and you just keep on taking extra turns that you reveal off of your dragon. This deck is really linear, but super powerful, and we're going to win on turn three in Pioneer in this video. Stick around and see in match number one. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsrum.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsrum.com slash donation dax that's enough for now let's play some magic have i ever told you that i am the absolute worst i misclicked on the record button going into match number one and i accidentally did not record either game uh so we're gonna look at moto replays right now we keep an absolutely stellar hand we play a turn one botanical sanctum we have otherworldly gaze to play on turn one tag him scheming on turn two but we're hit by a thought seize and Tygum Scheming is a card that I'm choosing to play over Founding the Third Path because it helps dig for your creatures. And that was something that I found playing in my league last night when I played the Atroxa build where I went one and four, which was just miserable. And one of the things that I didn't like about that was that Founding the Third Path just did not help me execute my combo at all. It is good against Thoughtseize. I will give it that. But that's about all it's good against. So I am choosing today to display the classic 12 uh, surveil cards. But also when you're playing Volumachus Lorehold, those surveil cards help find you time walks when you're in the middle of comboing. So that's something that I really, really like about these cards. So yeah, uh, so we found Tassiger. We have Neoform on top of our deck right now. Our opponent plays Liliana. We know that we're going to discard the Consider here. And now we're going to draw the Neoform. We play Tassiger, and then we're going to Neoform sacrificing the Tassiger. We can go get Velomachus Lorehold. And now we have to, we have actually a pretty tough decision. Do you attack your opponent and say, I will find a time walk? Well, we did. And then our opponent snap concedes. But the Liliana here was actually a pretty tough decision for me. I decided to attack and play it safe, but our opponent just conceded anyway. And now we're off to game number two. All right, so we keep a hand without Leyline Sanctity, which is a card that I sided in over four copies of Thoughtseize, and they immediately take my Neoform. Uh-oh, Tygum Scheming not being founding the third path. Oh, no. Yeah, and then I draw a Leyline. Not great. I still think that Tygum Scheming is better. There's only eight Delve creatures in the deck, and you have to find them. So, yeah, like, I think that having that card is just better. We draw into a Tassiger the Golden Fang. That was pretty good. And now I'm going to take two damage and play a Tygum Scheming. It digs immediately into Neoform. Guess what? Founding the third path here wouldn't have worked this way. We would have milled it. They would have exiled it to the Unlicensed Curse. And, you know, things are going my way now. And that's exactly what we want to happen. So they play a Graveyard Trespasser. Their Unlicensed Curse gets a little bit bigger. 
And now I'm going to draw the Neoform. I'll play my land, play the Chasiger and pass the turn. I'm all set up next turn for the Velomachus Lorehold Time Walk Loop, which is just great. And one thing that I found playing the Atroxa deck, by the way, was there was a number of games where I played the Atroxa on turn three and then it died or I lost the game in some sort of way. Like Mono Green, Nykthos Ramp just killing me through my Atroxa or the Boros Convoke deck just winning through. There's a lot of things that went wrong for me. And if you want to then protect your combo, you have to leave open mana and be slower. And being slower in this Pioneer format, I don't think is good. So here we're seeing the Velomachus just go to town, finding time lock after time lock. And now we're going to put our opponent to seven. I'm a card short or a mana short of hard casting Karn's Temporal Sundering because it costs six and the Tassiger. So I, I draw an otherworldly gaze, which is really good because I get to dig six cards deep for a time walk here and stack the time walk on top of my deck. Okay, so we dug six cards deep. There's likely to be a time walk in the top seven, right? Right? Wrong. 13 cards deep, no time walk. So our opponent's going to go to one life here, but I have a backup creature and I have a Leyline of Sanctity protecting me from Liliana of the Veil. Our opponent draws and they immediately concede. I have the same number of wins after one round that I did playing the Atroxa build last night. I'm telling you, this build is better than Atroxa. Let me know what you think at the end of the video. Watch the rest of it and I'll see you in match number two. Don't go anywhere and I promise moving forward I will hit the record button. See you there. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Round number two. So one of the downsides of playing this build over the Atroxa build is when you open up hands with time walks in them. Here we happen to have four of them, so we're going to take a mulligan. All right, so this hand is essentially a mulligan to five, really a mulligan to four, because we have two time walks and a second creature. No way to fill up our graveyard, no neoform. I'm going to take an actual mulligan to five instead of this theoretical mulligan to four. Our opponent is going to five. Okay, this is the best hand we've seen so far. I will, in fact, keep this. Keep. Put the pair of time walks on the bottom of the deck. I do feel like this deck actually mulligans fairly well, to be honest. Reverse the Uvenwald. They grab a swamp. So this is likely Grease Fang. We'll play a Botanical Sanctum and pass the turn. They play their swamp. Grizzly Salvage. They milled an Asikius Chariot. And some lands. Okay, on their, I mean, it's their theoretical end step. I can keep this and then try to discard their Grease Fang. I think that's probably the best move here, rather than just saying I'll draw both combo pieces before they can win. Oh, and the Otherworldly Gaze was the perfect draw for this decision. So we will Thought Seize them now. They have their own Thought Seize and a Rafine's Informant. We'll take the Informant. Leaving them, like, I don't even care about the Thoughtseize. Like, you're going to take a contingency plan? Whatever. All right, I will cast Otherworldly Gaze in response. We're going to keep the Consider on top. It's just a better use of mana going into the next turn. Okay, so we're going to play the Botanical Sanctum. And then we will play Contingency Plan. We need both a creature and Neoform. There's the creature. And I'm going to keep the Tassiger on top. I am not going to cast the Consider because I'd rather save the Consider for a following turn looking for that Neoform. All right, let's play the Tassiger. We want to leave Otherworldly Gaze in our graveyard just so that way we can flash it back digging for the Neoform. We're 25% of the way through our deck already, so we've seen quite a few cards. They have three cards in hand, one of which is a Parhelion. Otherworldly Gaze... We're going to mill the Volumachus, which means we only have one of them left. And it might be a little bit crazy. I kind of want to keep the Hooting Mandrills. Like, our opponent isn't doing anything. I can just beat them to death here. Go to combat. Ah, oh, yeah. 
All right, I'm going to play Consider in case I find a Thought Seize, and instead I find the card that would have won the game. Uh, we'll put that on top. Pass the turn. So maybe I was supposed to Consider instead of playing the Mandrills first. That's a mistake on my part. Shield Red, I don't care. We will lose two life. The Tigum Scheming was actually a very good draw here because assuming that I get one Time Walk, it will help me find the next one. Play Neoform will sacrifice Mandrills. Okay, and now we will attack triggers. We found Karn's Temporal Sundering, so I will take an extra turn. We'll bounce the Shield Dread, and that should be the ball game. We don't even need to take an extra turn because we bounced the Shield Dread, so now Tassiger deals lethal. So we have taken game number one away from Abzan Grease Fang. We will board in our four copies of Leyline of Sanctity. And I actually kind of like Ray of Enfeeblement here. It kills the Grease Fang. We'll board out Thoughtseize. I just don't think that's how we want to win this matchup. And you also don't want to put their vehicles to their graveyard. Mm, actually, I don't think I even want to board in the Rays. I think we just want to keep our deck consistent and outrace them. Game number two. This is a Mulligan. It's essentially a Mulligan to five having a Dragon and a Time Walk anyway. This is good. Keep, we'll bottom a scheming, put the ley line into play. So all I need to do is find land number two on curve. We have 17 lands left in the deck. And ideally it would be a green land. Consider was a good draw. Pass the turn. Rafine's informant, wither bloom command. All right, I'm gonna cast consider. We don't need a time walk. We'll put that to the graveyard. And I found the green land. I love that. Okay, so we drew another time walk, not ideal, but all I need to do now is find land number three off this, and ideally it would be a green land. Perfect. Okay, things are looking great for us here. Put the mana confluence on top. Pass the turn. They besage you us. Okay. I mean, I don't love that. We'll grab a breeding pool. If they have a thought seize here, that's not good for us. They do. Bummer. Okay, we need to find another Neoform. Not the end of the world. They took Mandrills. Interesting. Okay. Play the Contingency Plan. We'll mill the land. Put the Velomachus on top. And then two Time Walks on top of that. And then the Tassiger. There's no reason to play the land here, so I'm not going to. If they have something like a... Um, Go blank, I can discard. I guess go blank beats me anyway because it exiles my graveyard. Rafine's Informant discards a chariot. They play a land. They have two cards left. I'll take it. I go to 12. Uh, they had the duress. Oh, that's, that's the game. I'm going to concede. So the reason I'm conceding here is that I know that the top of my deck isn't good enough to win the game. Like, I have two Time Walks and then the other Velomachus. So, it's just not good enough. We'll go to game three. Brutal. Okay. We will resubmit. Game number three on the play. I don't think we want this. Mulligan. This is pretty good. Keep. Bottom the Time Walk. We don't have a Ley Line, but n double Neoform is quite good. Turn one Dark Slick Shores pass. We play a green source and traverse the Uvenwald. They grab a planes. I'm going to otherworldly gaze. We're going to mill all of these. So now I can play a turn two Tassiger. And even if our opponent plays a Thought Seize, we still have the ability to combo. They searched out a basic planes on their first turn. They play a black source. Ah, uh, they had the removal spell, Bitter Triumph. Which is an instant, so they could have just held it open. I'm in a lot of trouble now. That was devastating. So I guess it's better that they kill my Tassiger rather than me going for the combo and then getting my dragon killed. They discarded another Rafine's Informant. Come on, creature. There we go. I am one mana short of being able to play it. So if I draw a otherworldly gaze that could give me the combo next turn. Looks like they're going to combat with two cards in hand. We'll take a draw. Scheming. Play the scheming. All right, we need to leave the dragon on top of the deck. 
And I'm going to leave Chasigur on top of the deck as well. And now I'm going to play Hooting Mandrills. I'm trying to bait out removal if I can. They play a Grizzly Salvage. They find Grease Fang. They chose Murderous Rider. That's interesting. Looks like I might have a window to try to win here. All right, green, blue. We'll play the Neoform. Pick up a dragon. Go to combat. Swing, trigger. I found a time walk. We'll cast one. And now we'll go to the next turn. Land number five. We'll go to combat. I need to hit another time walk here. We do. Karn's Temporal Sundering, and this should be the game. Bounce their informant, they'll go to eight. And now I can play Tassiger. Okay, Tassiger, play Breeding Pool. And that should be lethal. Land number six. We did it. We are now 2-0. That is one more win than I had in yesterday's league. Can we get the next three? I certainly hope so. I'll see you in the third match. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. We are back at it in the third match on the play again, running hot with die rolls. So we have Volamachus in hand, but the rest of this hand is so good I'm going to keep. So there is a way that this game goes south. We don't find a Neoform before we find the second Volamachus. That is how we lose this game. But with a hand this good, you don't want to ship this back. Theoretically, in a crazy world that I don't know if it exists, in our 18 land deck, we could find another mana confluence and more lands and hardcast the Velomachus alternatively, but we wouldn't be able to use the time walks because it wouldn't have the plus one plus one counter from Neoform. Dark's Luck Shores and Thoughtseize. We're facing Phoenix. I'll take the Consider. Pass the turn. Definitely not playing out the Hooting Mandrills early. Another Thoughtseize, okay. Let's play the Tigum Scheming. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong, but I kind of want to maybe go beat down this game. I'd have to discard their Lightning Axe in order to do so. They missed their land. Yeah, I definitely like the beat down plan. Mana Confluence, let's play Thoughtseize. Take the Lightning Axe. And then let's play Tassiger. I want to leave the otherworldly gaze in the graveyard. Pass the turn. They find considers their draw step, looking for that land. They put the card on top, so it was a blue source, not a red source. In our upkeep, I am going to flashback otherworldly gaze. We're going to mill all of these. They don't help me win. And by milling all of them, I can also play Hooting Mandrills this turn. Let's play the Hoots. Okay, we are beating down. Our opponent goes to 16. They find a sleight of hand for their draw step. And a red source. Ledger Shredder. Considers the draw. Let's cast it, see if we can find Neoform. We don't. I'm going to bin this. And now I'll attack. So they're going to go to 8 life if they don't block. Okay. They find another red source. They free the Fae. They put Consider to their hand. They play Consider. Their Ledger Shredder triggers now. They mill an Arc Light Phoenix. And they found another Lightning Axe. That's not very nice. Okay. So I'd say that our opponent is now in the driver's seat if I don't find a Neoform. That said, I do have a lot of looks. I have nine looks for a Neoform before our next turn. Uh, I guess before my next draw step, I should say. We'll mill all of these, and then we'll flash back. Their Ledger Shredder will trigger. We found the Neoform. We're going to put the Neoform on top of the deck. I will Neoform sacrificing the Hoots, grab our Dragon, and then flash back the Otherworldly Gaze to help find a Time Walk. Ledger Shredder triggers again. 
becoming a rather large bird. You could say a big bird. We don't want any of these. All right, we are going to combat. We are looking for a single time walk to win game one. We found it. Turns temporal sundering. I will take an extra turn and bounce your ledger shredder. Okay. Thought sees you. Treasure cruise. I don't care, you're dead. Swing. I'll take another turn because I can. Sweet. We have one game number one. I have a feeling we want duress in this matchup, so we're going to bring those in. There's really two ways you can board here. You can board out consider, or you can board it out some of these two mana cards. I like boarding out some of the two mana cards just because I feel like the cheap spells are better against a fast deck like Phoenix. We will submit this. Okay, so I've opened up a Neoform. Like, this is basically a mulligan to five. Our opponent has kept seven. I think I'm actually going to mulligan. I just have a bad feeling about having the Velomachus in hand. This is similar to the last hand, except we have the Velomachus in the deck. We're going to take an actual mulligan to five. Sure. Okay. No Neoform. A little bit of a bummer there. Turn one, sleight of hand. We find another land. I think I'm going to hold the duress for now. And I'm just going to play otherworldly gaze. What if I like all of these? I guess I should mill at least the hoots. Okay. They play a canal. And ledger shredder. Yep. We'll play duress. Take spell pierce. Pass the turn. They play another big bird. And a sleight of hand. Discards aren't like Phoenix. That was a very good draw for them. Okay. I guess the play here is to duress them. Take the mystical dispute. And then I'm going to play breeding pool. And I'll pass the turn. And their upkeep. Otherworldly gaze so that way I don't trigger the birds. All of these will go to the graveyard. I just have to find Neoform and fast. You could have argued that I was supposed to keep my seven or my six. But I just don't think either of those hands, like my seven was definitely better than my six. And if I mulligan the seven, I don't think I was supposed to keep it. Okay, we'll attempt to play a Tassiger. Disdainful Stroke. Interesting. Okay. They play the Free the Fae that triggers their birds. They mill an Arc Light Phoenix. That is not good for me. Treasure Cruise. All right. I am dead. We can go to game number three. Maybe I was too aggressive with my mulligans. I'm not sure. Let's try it again. On the play for the third game. So this hand's very good, but I don't have a black mana source. We can try to fix that. I will play consider. I think we keep consider. Just because I'm not going to use this blue mana next turn. Likely anyway. Fire Bluff Canal. And a sleight of hand. I did consider playing Sleight of Hand in this deck over the 5th through 8th copy of the Surveil 5, but it just doesn't fill up the graveyard at the same pace. And we're really a deck that's trying to fill up our graveyard pretty quickly. We're going to bend the Thoughtseize. Yikes, that's not good. Play Breeding Pool. Pass the turn. We need to find Black Mana. And they're holding open counter spells. We'll play a Botanical Sanctum. Pass the turn. They free the Fae. They picked up Spikefield Hazard. I'll play Otherworldly Gaze now. We find a mana source, but it's a black mana source. I think I can do better. Maybe I'm being a little greedy here. I want an untapped black mana source. Flashback. That's not good. Okay. We'll put them all to the graveyard. I also think that there's a subtle read we're giving our opponent, which... They could choose to read into or pass on. And that's that I just milled six off of another worldly gaze. They might be thinking Bryant doesn't have it. This is a turn where I can tap out. And if they tap out, I can play Hooting Mandrills into Neoform unprotected. I only want the black source for the dress. I don't need black mana to combo. And they are respecting me. I have nine in graveyard. Let's play a Mandrills. That resolved. They might have a lightning axe. They free the Fae. Finds Treasure Cruise. They pick up the Treasure Cruise. And while they're tapped out, I'm going to Otherworldly Gaze. Once again, no black mana. No untapped black mana. They Treasure Cruise. They have 10 cards in their hand now. 
a lightning axe, my hooting mandrels, discarding a phoenix, sleight of hand. Come on, tap out. Phoenix comes back. They have one mana open. So if it's a spell pierce or mystical dispute, and of course I don't draw the black mana. That's brutal. I, in hindsight, I should have taken the black mana at some point, one of the, the tapped black land that I passed on. But we had eight untapped black sources that I could think of, and it just hasn't panned out the way that I wanted. They attack for three. I'll go to 14. Mana number five. Shredder. Flashback of the Whirly Gaze. There's one. I think I want to keep the Thoughtseize. Seven cards in Graveyard right now. I'll go to 13 and play Duress. That is a lot of interaction. Holy moly. We can't beat Aethergust, so we'll take that. And I'll play Hooting Mandrills. They're bird triggers. They discard the Arclight Phoenix. They stroke. They're attacking for five next turn. I don't know if there's a world that we win this. It just took me way too long to find that black mana source. They play Consider. They discard the Lightning Axe. They have five cards. They play a Tap Land and Treasure Cruise. Ay ay ay. Wait, maybe they didn't play a land? They must have been paying the cost for a Treasure Cruise with the Steam Vents. There's things that could have been done differently in this whole match regarding mulligans and decision on uh, milling, but I didn't play the way that things would have gone. Like, had I made those things, maybe I could have stayed alive. I don't know. Or maybe I would have won, but I had a couple really good windows, assuming I could have hit a reasonable number of cards in my deck, but it just didn't happen. And now our opponent has lethal here with Mystical Dispute back up. So we're going to lose the third match. It's a bummer. And we are now two and one. You could point to things like I've already said this, that I could have done better this match. There's worlds where I hit those cards and we win. So I'm being a little bit rough on myself, but I feel like this was kind of my own fault. Match number four coming up. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. All right, looking to bounce back, we're on the draw in match number four. I will keep. Turn one, Rafine's Tower. Dark Slick Shores. We need to find a mill effect. We have 12 of them in the deck. That would allow us a turn three win. We're going to take this Hornlock Whale because that's going to stop me from winning the game. Pass the turn. We draw and it's another uh, another shock land. We'll just play a land and pass. They play a land and do the same. Okay. We will continue to play land go. Our opponent creates a treasure token. And plays a fabled passage. We draw another time walk. Not great. We'll play a land and pass. Our opponent makes another treasure token. They're playing the Quintorus Canned. So whenever they cast a spell from exile, they deal two to each opponent and they gain two life. They create a 3-2 red-white spirit creature token. Discover four. And then their ultimate is exile any number of target cards from your graveyard. Add a red for each exile this way. We, they can play those cards this turn. So if I were to draw a scheming, we could win. We could try to win right now. And instead, I drew a dud. We'll play a land and pass. They discover four. Oh, I've seen this deck. This is the uh, the pseudo Gyruda deck. So I'm going to let them do their thing, but we're dead. Okay. All right. I've seen enough. We can go to the next game. We did not draw anything there. That was terrible. Let's bring in Duress, and I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to take out one of each Time Walk, and then one of each two-mana spell. Maybe reduce our mulligan rate just a little bit. Game number two on the play. Assuming that we can find a land, this seems okay. Maybe this was a greedy keep. I don't know. We'll take the Discovery, pass the turn. Yeah, maybe I was supposed to just ship this. Oh, no! No, not like this. I just lost. I guess the only way I can win now is beat down with my creatures. Take the Opus, I guess. 
Yeah, I'm not winning this anymore. Ah, oh, so brutal. This is what I get for keeping that hand. Ay, ay, ay. All right, I'm going to save myself the time. Uh, we're, I'm just going to concede. This match was 100% my own fault. Um, I should not have kept the hand in game two. Bummer. We are now two and two. I'd really like to finish this with a positive record. See if I can do it in match number five. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. You know, I've been burned before by keeping a hand with Velomachus in it, but this hand is so good. Like, I feel like... I don't know. It's tough to say no to these. If the Velmachus was a land, this would literally be a perfect hand. I'm going to give it a chance. We draw a time walk. We will pass the turn. Shredder. So we were facing Phoenix again. I get a chance at redemption. We find the land. Another Neoform. I'm going to play a scheming here. And I actually did not hit a land. Wow. Okay. I'm going to try to set up a situation where I can thought seize twice in two booting mandrels. They attack for one. We draw the thought seize. Let's cast it. Spell pierce and questing druids. All right. Well, I'm going to take my chance. I guess I would trigger there. Hmm. I do have another mandrels on top. All right, hoots. I am triggering their bird. They discard treasure crews and they seek the beast. They find land consider. They play the land. The best case scenario for us here is that they play the questing druid into consider. They cast consider. They mill over a fiery impulse. Okay. I believe I'm supposed to just jam. Blue. And then we'll make a green. Play the neoform. Dragon. And now we go to combat, attack, trigger, we missed the time walk. I am not even going to cast the spell because I don't want to trigger the bird. And pass the turn. They seek the beast. They exile an Arclight Phoenix. Yeah, that's uh, not a combo. They play a questing druid. And then breeding pool. And another questing druid. Alright, Tygum scheming was actually very good. Let's play the scheming. We did find a part of the water veil, so we're guaranteed an extra turn now. We'll attack, and we'll cast part of the water veil. This will trigger the ledger shredder. All right, part of the water veil. They're choosing to block. Okay. We will take our next turn. We find land three. Attack with the Velomachus. It triggers. We'll take Karn's temporal sundering. I'll target myself. Bounce a questing druid. And then play Hooting Mandrills. Oh, we have another Whirly Gaze in our graveyard. I did not even notice. Sweet. Kind of forgot about that, I won't lie. Okay, so Dress is coming back in. And I think I want to try the same plan I did last match, where I'm just shaving one of each of those cards. I understand that my Fizzle Rate on Velmachus will go up a hair, but... I don't know. I feel like I just want the rest of my deck to be consistent. Because when I've lost, it's because our deck isn't consistent. Name a better duo than me and drawing Velomachus lore hold. Really. We will mulligan. I guess we keep this. Keep. Bottom of scheming. We just have a turn one spire bluff. Dark Slick Shores pass. So what this deck actually wants, I think, is some sort of way to convert the cards that you don't want in your hand so like a c beyond for example draw two put a card back like i would love that put back a time walk put back a velomachus lore hold like something like that would just be so good but as far as i know there's no cards like that that are legal in pioneer so if you know of one feel free to tell me i'd love to try it out but i can't think of any that was an insane draw we need some green mana now consider i am just going to play a contingency plan experiencing a little bit of lag at the moment and there's some beautiful cards uh, i definitely want these i want all of this 
I will pass. Our opponent plays a sleight of hand. So sleight of hand was a card that I was considering for this deck over the additional copies of Tigum Scheming. But I just, you really want to fill up your graveyard quickly. And I think one mana cantrips only go so far. You can play them. There's nothing wrong with playing them. But I just kind of think that you end up being a slower deck. And if you're going to play the slower deck, why not just play the Atroxa deck? Like we are being a little bit slower here because we're facing a blue deck. But against a deck like Gabs and Grease Fang, you just want to put the pedal to the metal. You want to play a turn one spell. Turn two, you want to play one of your Surveil Fives into a turn three win. All right, so they're at 16. And step will play Consider. We will keep the Duress. So I know that I'm drawing a Thoughtseize next turn. I actually want the mana. So I'm going to allow them to trigger their Ledger Shredder here. Because if I draw the Breeding Pool and our opponent only has one piece of interaction, they're dead. So I'm going to choose to draw both discard spells. Actually, with the Shredder in play, they're not guaranteed to be dead. Let's try a Duress. A Mystical Dispute. I will not pay. And then they get to trigger their Ledger Shredder here, but I'll Thought Seize them. Uh, maybe I was supposed to play my Breeding Pool to avoid Spell Pierce. Hmm... Yep, and now I'm getting spell pierced. <sighs> That's just poor play. I have not been playing well this loop. All right, so I will now play Contingency Plan and try to dig for another discard spell. We have one. Okay, pass. They have two cards in their hand. Three after their draw step, excuse me. Treasure Cruise. That was good for them. They have completely refueled. They play an Opt, discarding an Arclight Phoenix. So that's quite the clock. They play a land, they have four cards. They're being very disciplined, not bringing back the Phoenix. Play Duress. Okay, this is my spot. I'm going to try to go for it. They get one draw off of the Ledger Shredder. I guess they can Seek the Beast as well. I guess they have a couple cards they could hit here. There's the Hooting Mandrills. They Seek the Beast. Looks like it's land and another Seek the Beast slash Questing Druid. Neoform? Okay, we're in a fortunate spot. Let's see if the deck can carry us after I boarded out two time walks. Swing trigger. We missed. I knew that was a possibility. We will scheming. There is a Karn's Temporal Sundering. We want to leave two cards on top then. So I'm going to put the Karns on top. Neoform on top. Mandrills on top, and then Consider on top. Like, I want all of these. They are now at 14 life. Sleight of Hand. They Seek the Beast. I was looking at the wrong... Was I looking at the wrong stuff? I might have been. Did they reveal a Spell Pierce to the Seek the Beast last turn and didn't play it? I was looking at the wrong pile. No, the Spell Pierce was delved to the Treasure Cruise. And I believe I'm dead here. Like, I can't actually beat Triple Arc Light Phoenix on defense. Oh, they just have four Arc Light Phoenixes? So I'm actually dead lethal. Oh, wow. I mean, they could have left all of these on defense and I would have died too. Okay. That was tough. Game three. Let's submit. On the play. Great hand. Deep. We'll play a Sanctum and Otherworldly Gaze. I'm going to keep the Tassiger. They play a Steam Vents, untapped, and pass. I want to seem innocent, so I'm going to just play my Mana Confluence and pass. On the end step, we can mill with Otherworldly Gaze, and that would put five cards to our graveyard, which is enough for us to win. So hopefully, this tells our opponent, hey, shields down, you're allowed to play Ledger Shredder, and that'll kill you. So that is what I'm hoping for here. They put the land to the graveyard. Fire Bluff Canal. And Shredder. Perfect. Otherworldly Gaze. We are obligated to mill all three of these if we want to try to win. Okay. Time to party. Play the Watery Grave. Yes. We'll play Hooting Mandrills. We need to start by hitting one Time Walk. If we get one Time Walk, I can then untap and play Contingency Plan, looking for the next one. Play the Neoform Sacrificing Hooting Mandrills. We discard a Phoenix. We'll get our dragon, go to combat, swing, trigger, and we found it. We will take an extra turn and bounce your shredder. They're at 12. 
We draw another Tassiger. Let's play Contingency Plan. And there's another Time Walk. Uh, I am definitely lagging very badly here because I accidentally just put a Thoughtseize on top of my deck. We'll play Mana Confluence. Play Thoughtseize. Or I'm sorry, play Tassiger. Go to Combat. Swing Trigger. Pass Part the Water Veil. We'll take an extra turn. Our opponent got to take two turns this game. And now they're dead. And that is going to be the League. So we're going to finish this with a 3-2 and two record, which is still better than the 1-4 and four that I had with Atroxa last night. So do I think that this deck list is perfect? No. Do I think it's better than the Atroxa builds? Absolutely. I think there's some room for improvement. If you really, really, really wanted to, you could play the Founding the Third Path over the Tigum Scheming. But I don't think that improves the deck. You like you want to be able to find your third land or Tassigers or things like that. So what would actually be an improvement is if there was some sort of card like See the Beyond. You could also look at maybe not playing Needle in your board. Uh, in my league yesterday, I had an instance where I couldn't beat an Ottawara even though I had a ton of discard. So that is why I chose to play Needle today. Maybe you don't end up playing it. Maybe you end up playing Alpine Moon for your Lotus Field matchup. Like there's some things you can do. There's some cards you can move around here, but I think this deck's still fairly good. I know that Neoform has fallen off in Pioneer, but I still really like the Dragon build. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching. Have a great day, and as always, keep storming. What you should do is like, comment, and subscribe because there's no better way to support us. And if you enjoyed this video, head over to moxfield.com and follow us there. It's truly the best deck website on the internet. We update all of our decks there regularly with the latest and greatest technology, so you're always up to date. Once again, go check out Moxfield, and thank you for watching.